If we look at Japan's history, it has faced devastating earthquakes and tsunamis throughout its history. Although it is impossible for anyone to avoid these natural disasters, Japan has no choice but to deal with them. Over the past 1,300 years, Japan has been struck by approximately 143 tsunamis, resulting in the loss of 130,874 lives. The deadliest of these occurred in 1741, with tsunami waves reaching a staggering 90 meters in height. Unfortunately, as time passes, the risk of tsunamis in Japan only seems to be increasing. In 2022 alone, more than 300 earthquakes were recorded. Unfortunately, many times three to four earthquakes have been recorded in a single day. Welcome back guys, to Think Up. Japan is the only country in the world where earthquake-proofing skyscrapers is mandatory, whereas from 2000 to 2022, Japan has been hit five times by tsunami, and the deadliest of these occurred in 2011, leaving a devastating impact on the nation. On March 11, 2011, an earthquake measuring 9.1 magnitude struck inside the ocean, 72 kilometers east of the Oshika Peninsula. The earthquake lasted for six minutes, triggering a massive tsunami. It was the fourth largest earthquake in the world and the biggest recorded in Japan's history. The tsunami generated waves up to 55 meters, or 180 feet, in the sea. The waves of water entered Sendai at a speed of 700 kilometers per hour and reached 10 kilometers inside the city. The biggest issue with tsunamis is that they cannot be predicted, even with modern technology, so thousands of people in Sendai residences who were warned only eight minutes before, did not even get a chance to escape. As a result of this incident, 228,000 people became homeless and 15,000 people lost their lives. On one hand, there was devastation, and on the other hand, the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant also failed, resulting in a dangerous nuclear disaster. This tsunami caused a total loss of $235 billion to Japan, which is also considered the world's most expensive disaster. Now the question arises here, that why is Japan frequently hit by tsunamis? The biggest reason for this is Japan's geographical location. This whole part of the Pacific Ocean which you are seeing is the cause of 90% earthquakes, volcanic eruption, and tsunami in the world. This ring which is being formed is called the Ring of Fire. Under it there are the world's most active volcanoes, which are surrounded by many tectonic plates, and unfortunately, Japan is located precisely on this belt of the ring. This is the reason why earthquakes occur frequently in Japan with some happening every few days, and why typhoons and tsunamis hit the country every few years. Apart from all these difficulties, Japan also has another issue and that is, 70% of its land area is full of mountains, and the remaining 30% of the flat surface is mostly located in the coastal areas, where the threat of tsunami is always looming. Shifting entire cities on the mountains is an impossible task, but Japan has been working hard for the past century to save its coastal cities, and its approach is different. Japan has made sea walls on the coast to protect its high-risk areas, and this is not a recent development, but sea walls have been a part of Japan's coastal defense for a long time. In 1896 and 1933, terrible typhoon attacked the village of Taro, but after that, this village became a great example of the coastal defense system, as Japan constructed two walls measuring 2.4 kilometers in length and 10 meters in height, which largely protected the village from sea waves, and similar structures were also built in other coastal cities of Japan. But unfortunately, the 2011 tsunami was bigger than these walls, although they were built to withstand waves up to 8 meters in height. The tsunami waves reached 12 to 15 meters in height and brought down entire structures in many places. After the 2011 tsunami, Japan decided to construct higher and longer sea walls, allocating $12 billion for this work, 
it was decided to build a 400 kilometers long, 15 meter high wall on the eastern coast, which is 5 meters higher than the previous walls. The foundation of the walls has been strengthened by going 25 meters deeper into the ground, and their width has also been increased compared to the previous ones. The walls have been designed specifically to withstand tsunami waves, and for this purpose, artificial tsunamis were created using simulators to test the walls against all types of wave patterns. The vibrator was used to generate an earthquake pattern similar to the one in 2011, which helped engineers calculate the size of the waves and the pressure they would generate. It was observed on the simulator that during the 2011 tsunami, the waves did not directly hit Japan, but instead traveled further inland as part of a flood. And this occurred because the seawalls largely broke the pressure of the waves. After testing on the simulator, the seawall has been designed in a curved shape. The design clearly shows that when the water hits the seawalls, the curved shape will cause the wave to turn back and break the pressure of another wave coming from behind. Apart from building walls, Japan has also constructed breakwaters in the sea nearby the hotspot location to break up the pressure of tsunami waves. When the waves move towards the coast, first these breakwaters break their pressure and then these 15 meter high walls. On the other hand, the local communities are very upset with these seawalls because in many places these walls are as high as four story buildings, which makes people feel like they are locked in a prison and some people fear that Japan is losing its tourists because of these seawalls. Japan has divided tsunamis into two different levels, Level 1 Tsunami, which occurs every 50 to 60 years and has waves up to 15 meters high. The seawalls have been built to withstand this level of tsunami. However, for Level 2 Tsunami, which occurs once every 1,000 years, the seawalls alone will not be able to stop it. To mitigate the impact of these rare tsunamis, tsunami mitigation parks will be built at hotspot locations. There will be a wall of trees in these parks, which along with breaking the pressure of tsunami as well as when the water goes back to the sea, it takes many objects along with it. So these tree trunks will also work to stop big objects. Japan's seawall is an impressive engineering achievement that also provided a certain degree of protection from the devastating tsunami. Japan is making every possible effort to save itself from natural calamities. But at the same time, Japan is also aware of the fact that this seawall is not a permanent solution. Increasing global warming is increasing the sea level day by day. The intensity of storms is increasing and earthquakes have become a daily thing. Japan knows very well that these giant structures will not be able to give it 100% protection from natural calamities. By spending $12 billion, Japan has actually bought time for its people, so that when this wall breaks the pressure of the waves, then the people will have time to leave before the wall breaks. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it informative and enjoyable. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, and I'll meet you in the next amazing video.